Welcome to the Living Waters exhibition by artist Darren Wallachuk in the Nace Gallery at the Paint Spot. So one of the things that got me excited is when you were say you said you were working in large scale charcoal. Right. And I'm like, large scale charcoal? And you make your own charcoal too. So I'm like, well, that sounds cool. Yep. And I just thought this would be a great thing to see a simple material used in a large scale. And I understand you gave yourself a time limit on this. For what really inspired me was I wanted to do something new and fresh for 2023. And that's my plan with uh, every exhibit I do this year will be new works. And this year was, I wanted to do something starting in the new year. Uh, I started on the first and gave myself one day for each of the drawings. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I work large, it, it frees me for more room for error, if you want to say. but. Even the errors end up being character, mm -hmm. and I, I love it, you know. But uh, I just, I feel more loose when I work large. So, um, and I did make my own charcoal with this. There is a little bit of mixture of um, uh, charcoal that I purchased from, from Paint Spot here, and also my homemade uh, willow um, charcoal. But I did use a little bit of pastel in here for mm -hmm. color mm -hmm. on the background. Um, and it certainly was a learning experience. And actually, every time I create is a learning experience. I think that's what drives me too, so. Yeah, try something, yeah. try something new. Uh, so the other thing I, I like about this is the that color that comes through from the pastel. Mm -hmm. And working large, I do agree that it leaves that atmosphere, mm -hmm. which in a small um, drawing doesn't take up much space. So when mm -hmm. you start working big, those large areas of smudges and marks and layers, really add a lovely atmosphere to yeah, it. So yeah. when you work big, it's like you get to walk in that atmosphere. Yeah. Do you have plans to work even bigger? Uh, actually, I do, and I have started already. Um, as we were mentioning, talking earlier, I have several drawings that are four feet by eight feet, and they are just charcoal with a little bit of Conte for mm -hmm. white. Um, but I'm really experimenting with different ways of applying it and seeking out other artists and tips that they've used. Mm -hmm. And even I've heard about scratching into the paper and then applying the charcoal after. It creates this neat little effect. So uh, there's so much you can do with such a simple, simple material, yeah. right? And uh, um, yeah, so this year is definitely a lot of charcoal mm -hmm. coming up and there is larger pieces, yeah. And I have smaller works too, mm -hmm that have stemmed from the larger pieces. Oh, nice. You know, once I've done the experimenting, then it can kind of, uh, I guess, be brave enough to isolate and know my composition in a, in a smaller space, right? Oh, nice. So, yeah. nice. so, done in burnt wood, you decided to do the theme of water. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this living water that's okay. the title of the show. Tell me yeah, about that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, preaching and talking about these scientists in Germany, how they've done this study and they believe that water is carrying memory. And uh, it, that just fascinated me. Uh, they were having students taking droplets from one container of water and then dropping it into another, but they could tell which student dropped those water. Hmm. So it was carrying this memory of knowing who transferred the water from one container to another. Now, how long the memory uh, lasts, I, I, I couldn't tell you anything, but that just fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I am a Christian, but uh, Jesus talked about living water. So I kind of toyed with the two ideas, mm -hmm. you know, living water and they're saying it has memory. So I just, it, I, I played with the two ideas and hoped that I would be able to do something fluid enough uh, in the drawings. Um, to kind of portray that, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so this is what I experimented with and what I've come up with. And then the other thing which I didn't notice right away, but you did come back and say they all fit together. That's correct. And as soon as you said fit together, of course, then you see the face. Okay. This isn't the first time you've done a dual image. No. Tell me about your fascination with double images. I know, I know. I, I don't know what, why or how, but even from the beginning of when I first started doing art, I, well, I guess I do know how. You know what, Salvador Dali mm. did a lot of double imagery or even dreams that would form into other things. And I was fascinated by that. My art teacher in high school introduced me to the Dali. And uh, in 2001, I studied Dali heavily for about a year. And then uh, when I went down and seen his works, um, 
it, it was good to see because there was some uh, uh, cracking in the image of these paints and you could see that he made a mistake and he moved the image and repainted it over here. And that all of a sudden, you know, Dali went from being, I guess, like an idol to just a human being who loved to paint mm -hmm. and really opened the door for me. And I realized, wow, you know, this is just, a, just another human being who explores and paints, paints and paints and paints and paints, you know? And uh, I don't know, somehow that just freed me to really explore it that I love double imagery. I love things that will, I, I'll look at something, but then later on, I'll find something new. It's almost like treasure hunting. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can have that in your own home, and often I'll never tell people about the double imagery. I may tell one or two, but I won't tell them about the whole yeah. until after the purchase or until they find it on their own. Yeah. It, it makes it exciting and fun. It's a piece that keeps on giving, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know, exactly. <laughs> and it also challenges your imagination to work for itself. Yeah. Once you realize that, people start seeing their own images. Yeah. And that, I really encourage that too. Right. Um, also, with all four images together, creates a face. Um, it's actually a face of Christ. Uh, hoping that it would turn out to be a face of Christ. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it is. Uh, that was my intention. And you can get prints here uh, with all four images together, creating that face. Oh, great. So, yeah. so when you add your images in, are you working from reference photos, from memory? Is it evolving from what you're looking at? Hmm. Uh, I'll actually start from imagination, and then whatever I'm weak on, mm -hmm. I'll need to do, uh, I'll take a picture of my arm, or I'll look up a hand, or something, grabbing something, and I'll use that as a reference. Yeah. And then uh, often, like some of the images in there, I'll often even just throw in because I've wanted to practice it for a painting coming up. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, it's a good time to practice, you know? If you can kind of make it sense of it with your imagery, then um, it's, a, it's an excellent place to practice for when you really want to do something that's already in works, right? So, yeah. Yeah, permission to experiment, permission to yeah, make a right. mistake, permission to move something. Yeah, exactly. This is why I love- It's so free. Yeah. I love having artists show artists their work yeah. because it is kind of naked that way and it's very inviting. So thanks for sharing all that. What do you hope the viewer takes away when they come in to see this show? And keeping in mind the viewers for us are mostly artists. Yeah, that's right. Um, my hopes of what the viewer gets is just to be inspired. Mm -hmm. To be inspired, to be free, to create whatever it is that's on your art, if it be other artists. If it's just a viewer that just likes to intake, um, I hope it moves you in any way that gives you want to take a second look. Mm -hmm. If I can get you to just create an image that makes you look twice, I've succeeded, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, You'll be happy to know there's lots of times where a person comes in okay. from a busy day mm -hmm. with their own art in their mind and they come in specifically to rush in and get something mm -hmm. and they see the show and they're stopped in their tracks and they come in for a closer look. So it, that, that happens every day. So. That is good, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's that our is, reason for being yeah. here. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing, I actually was kind of calmed was the feeling I got when this when it arrived in the store and I'm like, what a perfect show for January, mm -hmm. which is kind of mm -hmm. like the darkest time of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just coming mm -hmm. into the light now, but it's yep. like dark yep. time and, yep. you know, dark and black and moody. Yep. Mm -hmm. But there's such, I feel hope in this little bit of light showing through, like you have just enough of it to have yeah. hope. Mm -hmm. So balancing that moody black mm -hmm. with a hint of light, mm -hmm. was that part of your intention as well? Uh, you know... <laughs> I mean, I like to portray light in a lot of my works and stuff. Um, and I, I, I was a bit shaken when I was doing this because it went really dark really fast mm -hmm. uh, as far as the whole color. And um, I, that's why I kind of played with the uh, pastel in there mm -hmm. and to bring out some light. Um, and every, you know, every time it's an experiment and you never really know what you're perceiving, what others are gonna perceive yeah. after, right? Yeah. Um, I know doing this, when I look at it, I, I'm happy with, with how everything came and with the deadline of what I, I gave myself of 24 hours per piece. Um, overall, I, I am very pleased and 
it just came out to be what it is, mm -hmm. <laughs> given the time that I gave myself. So um, I tried to get a little balance. It is definitely like what you said, a bit on the dark side yeah. as far as a full color visual, right? Yeah. So I, I'm pleased that you found some peace in it still. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. so too. And mm -hmm. it is when you start out with not knowing where you're going to end up, but yeah. you have this loosey idea exactly. unformed in your head, you do have to eventually respond to what's in front of you and say, mm -hmm. Well, this is interesting. I'm going to pause mm -hmm. and let it be. So yes, um, that's a great, great lesson. A yeah. Great lesson. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Hey, thanks for being here. I'm yeah, so thank happy. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. You thank know you. what? I was very excited to exhibit here. Um, when the art store, of course, is uh, my second place to be in this world. Um, it's an excellent place to explore new uh, materials to help you create the images that you kind of want to perceive. Oh, yeah. portray, sorry, but uh, I just always get inspired, I always get strengthened, and I always get energized whenever I walk into an art store. So when uh, you, uh, Paint Spot or Ness Gallery asked me last year to exhibit, I uh, was very, very excited and flattered. So, yeah. And the space I'm really loving with what you guys have done with it, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, this, this is a mutual admiration because it is lovely to have this kind of unique work inspire customers when they come in. So it is a conversation between the materials and what people can do with them. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks.